Throughout the world, live coverage of major football and sports games has become one of the most popular forms of uh, television broadcast and has become a veritable source of revenue for the broadcast rights holders. The sporting federations and the individual, individual teams and prior to the launch of the major TV platforms, the rights to major national and international competitions belonged to the national free-to-air broadcasters individually or collectively. Unfortunately, the lack of proper regulation in this area in Nigeria ensured there was no definitive provision on how these rights were distributed. For years, the Nigerian Football League was plagued by issues revolving around the broadcast of matches in the Domestic Football League. Not even the nation's state-owned broadcast outfit, talking about the Nigerian T Television Authority, could broadcast domestic football games. And um, looking at this, we're talking about the broadcast deal and the Nigerian Professional Football League. Of course, there will be, there will be legal um, implications uh, to this. Uh, there was a broadcast deal that was signed between the LMC and Next TV. Question is, who and where can we find Next TV? How can we even watch the MPFL game? Because back then, it used to be a struggle to even watch one game on Super Sports, but now we don't get to see any of the games except you go to the stadium. But now we're hearing that there's a Next TV that's supposed to show the MPFL matches, but to date, nothing to show. Uh, sadly, I don't represent the LMC. <laughs> the LMC will be in the best position to answer so, this question. Exactly. But again, um, I think that also shows the kind of mentality we have. The season commences, you rush to the media to announce with uh, pomp and pageantry that you have entered into a five-year broadcast deal with a reputable Chinese broadcast outfit. Now, we have gone into over 14 games, match days, into the MPFL season, mm -hmm. and we have not seen any match. Now, what does that tell you? It simply means that maybe somebody is not entirely saying the truth. Mm. And I said it last week, and I'm going to say it again. Um, this is probably something that the security agencies should investigate. Mm. Why do I say so? You have a multi-million dollar deal. The value quoted in the media is $225 million, Dollars. spread over five years. Now, it's most likely are going to run run down the first year of this contract without seeing any game. Mm. So the question is, what platform can we see this game? Now, rumors from the grapevine, unconfirmed of course, is that um, they, they have actually farmed out that broadcast deal to a local telco that is supposed to provide a streaming platform mm. for the games. I am yet to see anything like that. Okay. I don't know whether you have seen it. <laughs> but all. my concern is, how do we commercialize this deal? When you look at our contemporaries, you, you, you talk about um, the league, Bundesliga, the Italian Serie A, the English League, and even the, um, even the, the Spanish Ligon. La Liga, French Ligon. You see, the way they structure their broadcast deals are such that they have, through innovation, technological innovation and regulation, been able to commercialize it. How do we commercialize this deal so that we can get the best out of it? The first thing which is commendable, which the federal government has done in, in January 2019, a law was, was signed by the president, the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Act. Now, that law set up the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission. Mm. That is now the regulatory body that should oversee such transactions. Now, under that law, it is now an offense to give exclusive broadcast deals. In mm -hmm. fact, exclusivity in any area. Yeah. And so what it simply means is that somebody cannot come and assume a dominant market position yes. and um, restrict competition. So that is what that law seeks to do. The law protects consumer interests and makes sure that Nothing is put in place that will restrict competition. Now, this next TV deal, assuming um, on the face value from what we have been told, that that is actually what is in existence, next TV cannot, for all intents and purposes, assume the broadcast rights of every game in the MPFL. Exactly. That will be a breach of this law we are mm -hmm. talking about. Now, up until 2015, I'll go to Spain shortly. Up until 2015, um, the Spanish football federation uh, more or less had a structure that seemed to uh, allow 
the individual clubs to negotiate their commercial broadcast deals mm. for themselves. Real Madrid and Barcelona, for example, in 2015, just before the new law came into force, Real Madrid and Barcelona between themselves shared 480 million euros for the 2014-2015 season. season. Now, uh, that is because the La Liga ceded the rights to negotiate such deals to the individual clubs. Now, that particular model seeks to reward brands mm -hmm. rather than on-field success. What you have in England is a situation where the league itself, the regulatory body, negotiates this deal on behalf of the clubs and then shares a certain percentage of the money to those clubs. Mm. Now, that is what we have replicated in Nigeria. But the question is, what is the percentage of the money from this LMC deal mm -hmm. that will go to the clubs? Because by now, most of the NPFL clubs ought to have been credited, at least exactly. for the, the first installment of this deal. Nothing has, nothing mm. has happened. So, um, but again, I, I mentioned that uh, technological innovation has also come to help mm. uh, teams and sporting federations to leverage on the commercial um, advantages of engaging in such deals. Mm. Um, you, you have, you have um, BT Sports and Sky Sports. Yeah. They are sharing about 160 games between them out of the 380 games in England. Now, uh, Amazon has a streaming platform that allows them to stream 20 games per season. It started from 2019 okay. and it's going to last till 2020. So these are the things and I am hoping that we'll be able to look look at ourselves and tell ourselves the gospel truth that mm. maybe somebody is not entirely t saying the truth. Well, we spoke with um, J.K. Raikoje, who is a specialist when, it's co when it comes to the Nigerian Professional Football League. He also had a few things to say concerning the broadcast deal. Let's listen and we'll be right back. The deal of the MPFL, uh, that's um, the one signed by the LMC. Well, um, we keep waiting, uh, keep waiting for, for it to actualize. Sometimes it takes a while. But um, again, uh, truth be told, let, let's tell ourselves the truth. It's not, um, it, it's not, um, um, it, it's, it's, it's live streaming. Uh, live streaming is different from the real broadcast. I mean, even coming out as if it's um, the matches to be on, 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 on TV, on uh, terrestrial TV, probably a, a satellite, but then it's not um, going to be there of those. It's just purely uh, live streaming. So let's see how it works. We, we all hope it works. Now, you said it's purely live streaming. And I'm wondering how many of us can afford data to watch the food, football games? And how many of us would even choose to watch the Nigerian Professional Football League when the same live streaming app will offer me the EPL, the La Liga, even the Bundesliga, and some of those leagues that I can't get to see on TV, I get to watch it online, like the Chinese League, I don't get to see it anywhere. So how many of us would be interested in getting this particular um, line from this telecom telecommunication giant to watch the Nigerian Professional Football League? Don't it doesn't just sound right for me. I know in other, in other climes, we have Real Madrid TV, Manchester United TV, Arsenal TV, and the likes. Why can't we even have Equara United TV, Kano Pillars TV? Why does it have to be Next TV and we still cannot get to watch the games? It must be live streaming where the network is very poor in Nigeria. Um, let me first respond to your question, Equara United TV. I would say that um, as it is now, I don't think there's any of those um, football clubs that play in the NPFL mm. that can actually afford to own their own TVs right now because they can barely afford to run their own football clubs. Mm. So, I mean, the, the decision of the LMC or the move of the LMC to actually provide a broadcast cover for all the games, you know, for all the football clubs playing in the NPFL is interesting. But the, the issue with this is you, are, you hadn't finalized the deal with Next TV or you hadn't, you hadn't put out the, the way, the, the framework in which the deal was going to work, mm. right? Because I was, I was saying, I said last week and I also, I'm saying again this week that I haven't seen any company registered, you know, under our own laws as yeah. the Next TV. Obviously, before the Next TV can, can have, uh, can stream Very any nice. of our games, yes, in Nigeria, they have to be, they have to be um, registered. Yeah. So I haven't seen anything that's, that's like Next TV mm -hmm. that's registered in, in Nigeria. So but that aside, we've heard that, you know, they're partnering with one of our telecommunication companies to hear these games, uh, to, for people to be able to, to, to view these games yeah. via mobile. Like what you said again, how many people that actually watch these games have phones. How many mm. of them have phones? I've been to some of these MPFL games and I've seen the fans of these 
various clubs. <laughs> they probably do not even know that there's a, there's a possibility to watch these games on uh, on mobile. Yeah. Apart from that, which telecommunication company is uh, partnering with you? You know, on this, how many uh, how many subscribers do they actually have? Because sure. that's another thing to consider. You say you want to to so do I have to change my my network before I can you know view mm. those games? So these are some things to consider. I believe that this deal should actually be proved because this this announcement came out sometime last year, mm -hmm. and since then I've been I've been <laughs> refreshing and refreshing pages on the internet, but we haven't seen anything more about this deal. So it's it's an interesting move. It is important that we have coverage for our games. Yeah. We claim to be the giant of Africa. We have to be giant. We have to be the giant in every sphere, in every in every area. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 an interesting. Move. Move, but I believe that the LMC they haven't finished their um, they haven't finished their own part of this of this deal. There's a lot mm. more that they need to do. So I'd say that um, the deal is the deal is interesting. The TV deal is interesting, but it, it they need to be probed. Yeah. They need to be probed. There's there's a lot more that um, needs to come to public view mm -hmm. about this deal. Very true. Talking about uh, the broadcast deal of the Nigerian Professional Football League. I just hope that uh, in uh, coming weeks the LMC can come up with a statement and let us know exactly what is going on. And as we run down uh, with what we have for you this morning, let's talk about um, the career cycle of a professional athlete. Yes, um, I know there are procedures on how um, football players, sportsmen and women get to go about um, living their daily life and uh, being the professional that we call them to be. But I'll, I'll stay with um, doing, let's, let's deal with this topic, the career cycle of professional athlete. Does it have to do with um, um, how one grows in the game? Does it have to do with exercises? Does it have to do with um, the, the legal as aspect of um, sportsmen and women? I don't know, just educate us on that. Okay, when we're looking at the career cycle of a professional athlete, uh, first of all, being an athlete is, is, is just like being in any other profession. Mm. So you decide that you want to be a footballer, you decide you want to be a basketballer, and you're going, in, you're going into it for a, for a period. No, you know, as a, as a sportsman, as a sportswoman, uh, there's a limited number of years that you can, actually, you can actually play. The body begins to get tired. Mm. So it's important for you to have looked at the beginning of your career and also look at the end of the career from the beginning and structure it in such a way that at the end of, the, of your career, you won't, you won't be regretting ma mm. you know, making a mistake taking this particular, uh, this particular route. So for, for the career cycle of a professional athlete, the first thing the professional athlete has to consider is who he chooses as his manager mm. and also having an agent. Okay. So now, I said that because a manager and an agent, they, they usually they play different roles, but they are also very important. Mm. Now, having a manager, the, for, for, for a, for, let, me, let me use football as an example. Now, for a footballer, a manager is usually involved in the career growth mm. of a, a, a player of yeah. a footballer. So the manager is there to give career guidance mm -hmm. to the footballer. So you tell the, the, the manager is really there to tell, it's just like a parent. So the, the manager knows how uh, the football cycle goes, and then the manager is there to tell the footballer that yes, make this move, do not make this mm -hmm. move, you know, play with this club, this is the best thing for you to do. Now a manager is also there, usually managers help these players look for agents. So now an agent comes in where a player needs to maybe broker a deal, uh, you know, get employment to a particular club or move from a particular club to another club. That's usually where agents come in. Come in. So now a, a manager is more consistent than an agent. Okay. Right. So an agent could just come in for a particular, uh, a, a particular deal and then get his, his payment, be done with the player and then move on. Mm -hmm. But usually a manager is there from the beginning of the of the of the athlete's career, career to the end of it. So now, also another thing that a, a, a player needs to consider when looking for a manager and, and, and an agent is the credentials of these managers or these agents. Now, it's important to look at the manager or the agent that you want to employ. Is it um, is he accredited? Usually, for agents, managers do not necessarily need to have any accreditation. But for agents, using football and, as an example. A, 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 a football agent is supposed to have a license, usually issued by the NFF or by FIFA. Mm. So you have a you have a license, you have a license, a number that's usually given to that agent, and that agent is you know allowed to broker deals in football. Yeah. So it's important for the player 
to not be to to protect themselves to not be open to scams because somebody just comes up one day and says it's an agent and then you don't look into the person you don't mm. ensure that that's why a lot of our players are falling you know into some of this um shady deals because they do not probe the agent or they do not look into the manager okay. so it's important to for, for for the success of a career it's important that the player has a manager or an agent another thing is uh, negotiation of deals. So like I said, the manager is there to give career guidance. Mm. So it's important that a player has either a manager or a solicitor, a lawyer, mm. that is usually with him when he's negotiating employment contracts. Mm. So for just like just like if you want to get employed into a into a, into a particular company, you negotiate. Yeah. You have yes, you have you, a couple of negotiations, a couple of interviews, and then we agree to certain terms. So you know, most times if you look at if you look at Nigeria, for example, most of our players are not all that literate. Yeah. Some of them are even un uneducated. They just have that talent, they have their skill. Mm. So they are probably not in the best position to negotiate their deals or to look at what the terms of the employment contract says. Exactly. Which is really why most of them fall into, like I said, these shady deals. Mm. So imagine having a manager who is knowledgeable about the game, who is knowledgeable about the terms that should be in an employment contract. Mm -hmm. So you, the, the, the player is on a more advantaged position, is at a mm. more advantaged position than any other player that does does not have a manager mm. or a lawyer. So the lawyer, or the, the, the lawyer or the manager sits with you through every employment negotiation, looks into the mm. terms of the contract mm. and decides that, okay, these are the terms that are that are good mm. for you. These are the terms that you should agree on. Mm. They negotiate the terms so that your duration of playing with that club or your duration of your, of your career, you are protected mm. as a player. Another thing to consider, uh, you know, looking at the career cycle, uh, the mm. terms of the well, employment sorry, contract. Let me, let me hold you on, on that one because we have um, uh, Victor Ezeji on the line, a former Nigerian Professional Football League player. We'll continue with um, doing after the call. Um, he played in Nigerian Professional Football League for so many years. He's more like a legend when it comes to playing um, professional football. Uh, welcome to the show, Victor Ezeji. Hello. Do we have you? All right, let's um, continue with uh, this. I, I'm doing, I've seen a couple of players um, fall victim to being scammed, like you rightly mentioned. They, are, they, they keep sick, they seek greener pastures, and they tend to fall into the wrong hands of um, the underground money, um, agents who don't even know the job. They just want to take the money and run. And even if they get deals for these players, most of them don't even get good deals. They send them to countries that we can't, we never get to hear anything about them until probably years later, they now, we now get to see them probably in the Turkish league, in the Chinese league, then they get to start growing. But before then, they've run out of time talking about their age now. We don't get to see them hit the limelight. So whose fault is this? Is it the player's fault who is seeking greener pastures, and most especially in the Nigerian Professional Football League, we call them the one-hit wonders. Probably after a season, they have a very good season the next minute they're looking for greener pastures. Is it the player's fault or the agent who is hungry to make money off that player? Okay, um, in response to that, like I said, when a player wants to begin his professional career, yeah. it's important for the player to look for a good manager. Mm. Now, that manager is there to give career guidance. Mm. So I'd say that for most of these players that fall victim of uh, this... Um, scam? Yes, yeah, scam, <laughs> shady deals. But that's how I see it. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, this scam, these shady deals, um, I've not met any one of them personally, mm. but I would say they probably did not, um, they probably do not have a manager, mm. first of all, or secondly, they probably did not ensure the accreditation of this manager or look at the track record of this manager mm. to ensure, like I told you, you know, managers don't have any license. No, it's not their, their, their jobs, their duties are not necessarily regulated. Mm. So I could wake up tomorrow and say, I want to manage a player. It's not, it's not a big, as long as myself and the player, we come into an agreement. Yeah. Yes. And then I, I say, okay, I'll, I'll, look at, I'll look to your career for you and I'll do this, I'll do this for you. And then we just have mm. our agreement. There's, there's, no, there's no big deal, basically. Okay. So I'd say that some of these players usually do not look into the manager before, you know, before mm. signing any, any deals with them. Mm. Also, right. we have Victor we're, back we're on the line. Now, okay. All right, um, Victor, good morning and it's good to have you on the show. Hello, Victor. 
Oh, I think it's a network network issues that we're having this morning. That's the thing. If you don't have good network, how can we get to watch the Nigerian Professional <laughs> Football League? Just to make a phone call, we're having issues with the network. Well, I'll, I'll go over to um, Steve to tell us more about the career cycle of a professional um, athlete in Nigeria. Thank you. Um, listening to Doyin, well, maybe... It's important to share a personal experience I had with one of the players okay. um, who apparently was desperate to go abroad. I introduced myself. I said, I am a lawyer. I am a sports lawyer. Um, I believe we can uh, do something about your career and everything. Mm -hmm. Organa opened up and said, oh, uh, I, need to, I need to go abroad. I need a manager. That was the first thing that came into his mouth. I said, you need a manager. So I took that to mean that he needed an intermediary, somebody who can represent him yeah. when he's negotiating his mm. contracts and everything. Lo and behold, um, he said he wanted a club, wanted a better deal. I said, okay, let me see whether I can speak to one of my contact, contacts in the MPFL to see whether they can give him a trial. Yeah. Uh, the next thing, he said he wants to go and play abroad. <laughs> so I think the starting point is the desperation uh, yeah. the among the players. Now, some of them lie about their age. Let's not pretend about it. Sure. Lie about your age. You probably started playing um, amateur football over 10 years ago, and then you now come back and say you are, still, you are 21 or mm. you are 19, mm. that you want to play in the MPFL. Mm. They get that breakthrough to play in the MPFL. The next season, they are thinking of going to play abroad, mm. regardless of the location. Uh, now I hear that players, people, Nigerian players go to Cyprus, Cyprus. they go to <laughs> Kazakhstan yeah. to go and do what exactly. <sighs> so that's why many of them fall into these traps. So and this is the reason why they need to be enlightened on some of these issues so that they will be able to understand because you are not able to build a career for yourself. Mm. Now look at Victor Zizi. Victor Zizi played all his, all his uh, football in Nigeria for like 10 years. He was, he was a regular. Mm. So that's why you refer to him as a legend. He's a, truly a legend and should be an example to other athletes. So it, it's not enough for you to just jump up and say, okay, because we had one breakthrough season. Um, we have a number of people in the past few years yeah. who have won the highest goal scorer in the MPFL. The next season, you don't even hear about them. MM Medlock is one, one player. Exactly. Yes. Don't hear about them anymore. <laughs> they travel abroad, go to one obscure uh, place to go and play football. Mm. And you, nobody hears about them. The next thing, they smuggle themselves back into the country to mm. go and play for. I heard one of them, one, one name like that the other day, <laughs> a name I heard last heard about four years ago. Mm. I didn't he's even know he's back league. in the MPFL. So, is a problem. They need to be enlightened on some of these issues. And then we need to put up a structure. Mm. We don't have a proper licensing regulation that will check the activities of some of these greedy agents, so-called mm. agents and managers. Because that is the only way. In England, I mentioned the case of uh, Mercato and Everton Football Club. Yeah. It was that small point of detail of having the FA registration intermediary number, registration number mm. on the invoice that turned the case on itself, on its head. Now, imagine if we had such a situation in Nigeria. Any agent that uh, engages in such corrupt pra practices should be blacklisted, but we mm -hmm. don't even have them. And sure. you try to get some of them to come and speak on these issues, they don't even want to be mentioned. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a holistic process that everybody has to take responsibility, mm. the LMC, the NFF, everybody should sit down and find appropriate regulations mm. that will put some of these things in check. Then on the part of the players, the players should be more educated to uh, hire agents or managers that mm. will be able to guide them through some of these processes. Because uh, you look at the contract negotiation, many of them don't even realize that there are secondary streams of income you can mm. make aside from any salary. Your image rights, for example, is something you can commercialize. You mm -hmm. commercialize your image rights. You go to get to one of the confessionaries. I, I see uh, most, most of our elite MPFL players who have probably won the highest goal scorer or MVP awards in the season. I don't see them being signed up by any of these companies. Sure. So if they had proper guidance, perhaps they would be able to identify some of these underlying uh, commercial advantages yeah. of hiring an agent. Now, looking at um, this now, what bothers me is education. Where does education come to play 
in all of this? Because um, from my own point of view, I feel like if you know, if you're educated, like you don't necessarily need to attend the university, have um, university education, but as long as you have a little bit of education, you should be able to know the right things to do, signing a contract with a football club, knowing the details of your contract, and also know if you can take that contract or not. So education, I feel like it, come, it plays a huge role in, in, in things like this. Correct. I completely agree with you. Mm. Education, uh, I mean, <laughs> is a no-brainer. Mm. Uh, we're not saying you should be a university graduate, you should hold, hold a degree, mm. but the basic, some of the basic things, how many of them actually know how to read and write? Mm. So even those ones that know how to read and write, how many of them actually appreciate the small clauses in the contract? Mm. I, the other time, I made mention of the fact that some of these, because under the MPFL framework rules, you are required to submit a copy of your contract mm. to the LMC. Now, by some kind of artifice, they get a separate contract. They, get, they give them two contracts. They sign one that is known between the parties as the binding contract between them. Then they sign another just so as to be seen to be complying with the MPFL framework rules and mm. submit to the LMC. Why would we be engaging in something like that? Mm. So something is a sharp practice that is even uh, prohibited under the LMC mm. rules. So um, probably the best way to do it is to continue this campaign and hope that many of them will be enlightened enough to take up some of these issues, even without formally consulting a lawyer or mm. an agent. Very true. We'll keep talking about this and uh, hoping that very soon things will change with football.